Tonight, I'm going to capture arguably the most stunning nebula pairing in the northern night sky. And this is coming from astrophotographers on both sides of the planet. Dylan O'Donnell once told me that the heart and soul nebulae in Cassiopeia is the one subject he's jealous that he can't photograph down under. I wish I could shoot the heart and soul nebula from down under, but at least we've got Karina. Is that a dab? Is that still a thing? That's right, there's a glorious pair of emission nebula in the night sky right now. And if you've got a wide field telescope or a telephoto camera lens, you need to try it. Huge wide field nebulae, or in this case, a pairing of two emission nebulae are my favorite type of astrophotography projects. Tonight, I'll capture the heart and soul nebulae using a refractor telescope with a focal length of 275 millimeters and a 24 megapixel full frame camera. This will result in capturing sharp, massive, high resolution images. There's a super bright moon in the sky tonight and that's not great for capturing images with a one-shot color camera. Not without the proper filter anyway. But it's a clear Saturday night and I've got a tasty little rig I'm playing with right now. This is the ZWO ASI 2400 MC Pro one-shot color camera. I am finally shooting with a full frame dedicated astronomy camera. It's similar to the Canon EOS RA spec-wise but with cooling. I've got a Radiant Triad Ultra quad band filter in front of the camera to help isolate those good bits in the nebulae and give me some creative options when processing. I'm not convinced that the images I take tonight will give me enough overall integration to create a reveal worthy image but thankfully I've got a ton of data I shot last year on the Heart and Soul Nebula using this exact same telescope. Not only was it the same telescope but the same filter and the same sensor size at nearly the same image scale in terms of pixels. I'll merge the two data sets together into an epic multi-year masterpiece. So these two cameras are going to work together on this project whether they like it or not. The plan is to capture as many five minute exposures on the Heart and Soul Nebula as possible. I should be able to get at least four to five hours worth of data if the weather holds up. Wait, I always jinx myself when I predict the amount of exposure time that I'm going to get in a night, so tonight I'm going to get 10 to 15 minutes worth of exposures and anything after that is a bonus. I'm using the ASI Air Plus to run my imaging session tonight and I can honestly say I'm loving this thing more and more by the day. Or by the night. The UI is so well thought out and it's such a smooth process. I'm getting more comfortable with the entire setup routine and it's just a lot of fun to use. Even if I continue using my laptop computer with APT and PHD2 guiding on another rig, I can't imagine not setting up the ASI Air Plus on the side. It'd be a great option for traveling too. Yep, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. I also love these super comfy sweaters from Cuts today's sponsor, even though it makes me sad that winter's on its way. The weather forecasters say that this winter is going to be a doozy too, so awesome. Unless Chuck, Mr. YouTube Shorts himself, has a clothing deal he hasn't told me about, I believe I'm the only astrophotographer on YouTube with a clothing sponsor. Hey Trevor, I'm working on it. This sweater is ridiculously comfortable. Do you remember what I used to wear in these videos? Like thrift store bargain bin ripped shirts and track pants. Wow, I've come a long way. Cuts Clothing is blowing up right now and I can't wait to see their new outerwear lineup that's coming out this fall. I'd like to think that I'm their official Canadian winter tester. If you like what I'm wearing, you can use the 15% off link in the description for your next order. Thank you to Gabe and the entire Cuts team for believing in me, you guys rock. The tricky part about a project like this is locating and framing up the targets. They cover a huge area of the night sky and even with a full frame sensor and a wide field telescope, Scope, you may need to rotate that camera sensor to squeeze everything in. The brightest area of these nebulae is the fish head nebula, which is a subsection of the heart nebula. You can use this area as a guidepost when you're taking your test images to frame the whole thing up. Okay, my camera and telescope are pointed towards the heart and soul nebula in Cassiopeia now, but it's just behind the tree. So in about 10 minutes, I'm going to frame it up and I know I'm gonna have to rotate that camera sensor to squeeze them both in. This camera and telescope combo, there's a little bit of vignetting at the very edges, so I wanna make sure I fit all the important details well centered in the frame. Projects like this aren't just fun to shoot, but they're such a pleasure to process too. If you really like those crispy, detailed, 
high resolution images look into a configuration like this. Thank you guys so much for the support you've given me over the last five years as we approach 300,000 subscribers on this channel. I hope you haven't minded primarily hanging out in the backyard for the last year and a half. When things get a little bit more back to normal next year, I can't wait to actually interact with you guys in person at a star party or an astronomy event. I hope you enjoy my image of the Heart and Soul Nebula at the end of the video. And as always, until next time, clear skies.